Hello mate, thanks for clicking on this video. You're watching Video Game Subscription Wars, the channel that covers every game on every video game subscription. And today we're talking about the recent news from EA in which they've bundled together their previous subscriptions, EA Origin Access for PC and EA Access for console uh, into one unanimous EA Play subscription. Now this is only a branding change and unfortunately it doesn't mean that an EA Play subscription goes cross-platform. It's actually kind of more confusing than it was before because now you have to make the distinction when you say EA Play, whether you're talking about EA Play for PC, EA Play for Xbox One or EA Play for PS4. There's also EA Play Pro, which is the premier subscription, but this is only available to PC owners. And you may be thinking you already recognize the name EA Play, and that's because it's also the name of EA's annual press conference, which has now been retitled to EA Play Live. So yeah, a lot clearer all round. But hopefully that's cleared things up if you were wondering why uh, your EA subscription has changed title. And while I don't necessarily agree with the naming conventions, I do think EA Play is a pretty good subscription and one that can get you a lot of value for a pretty small monthly cost. One thing that is cohesive across EA Play is the price, which is the same whether you're on PC, Xbox One or PS4. It's £3.99 per month or £20 per year or $4.99 per month, or $30 a year if you're in America. I think that's a pretty good deal, but uh, to kind of prove that to you, I thought now was a good time to go through the different EA Play libraries on each of the platforms, pick out some highlights, and help you decide whether you think uh, EA Play is worth its monthly cost. Okay, so this is a side-by-side -side of EA Play on the PlayStation 4 on the left here, and Xbox One on the right, and you'll notice pretty much through this whole library that they're very very similar um, so I think this first page is exactly the same um, obviously the big probably big hitters from EA's standpoint is the annual sports games FIFA 20, NHL 20, Madden 20 so if you're someone who buys all three of those uh, you know every year on your console then for four pound or four dollars ninety nine or three pound ninety nine a month. This is probably worth it just on that. And you also get um, their new games like Rocket Arena, Need for Speed is the, Heat is the latest Need for Speed game. I haven't played Plants vs Zombies to be honest. And then Battlefield Five is the latest Battlefield game. Um, so it's a good start. But then the further you go down this, you'll notice that I mean, even on the first page, you'll see that these libraries are kind of padded out with the older versions of FIFA, NHL, NBA and Madden which I think because these are annual game releases older versions have a very short lifespan it is basically a year so I can't imagine anyone playing these games on a subscription because they just have the the most recent version available obviously you won't get the latest Madden with this um, subscription I don't think because they usually leave them for the pro subscriptions which you can't get on console but there are a couple of good indie titles on here too Unravel 2 is good and Fair or Fay. you'll notice that the PlayStation 4 library is slightly smaller than the Xbox one but they are pretty identical The Sims 4 is obviously a great game um, Battlefield Battlefront 2 um, is really good. It's not the Celebration Edition, but that doesn't add much. And all the Need for Speed titles, I haven't played Need for Speed since Need for Speed Underground 2, so I'm not sure how different they are. But Titanfall 2 you get on both, Mass Effect Andromeda if you really want to play that. Um, and then like we're already at FIFA 17, like no one's playing FIFA 17 anymore. The second Mirror's Edge is pretty good though. Battlefield 1 is different enough to Battlefield 5 or V. Um, Titanfall 2, def definitely a highlight. Dragon Age Inquisition is pretty good that I don't think... Oh no, it is on Xbox. Um, so I don't think there are any games exclusive to the PlayStation 4 subscription. Whereas if you keep going through Xbox One, we've got Peggle 2, which is a classic. Crisis 3, Dead Space 3. Um, Need for... No, not Need for Speed Rivals. Bejeweled 3, so kind of mobile games. Feeding Frenzy 2, um, but like decent mobile games puzzle games or i'm not sure of the name for it but and you also get the mass effect franchise which is pretty huge because like mass effect 2 is one of my favorite games ever so i mean that's pretty big 
and have no idea why that isn't on the PlayStation 4 one. Um, I can't imagine why that's the case. SSX, uh, Crisis 2, Dead Space 2 is really good, Skate 3 is really good, Zuma's Revenge, the Fight Night games, not sure how they hold up today. Um, first Peggle, the first Mirror's Edge, the first Dead Space, Battlefield Bad Company was good at the time. Don't know if anyone would be playing that anymore. The first Mass Effect, very good. Army of Two isn't that good, but it's there. Um, and the older and some some more kind of mobile puzzle games. So I'm not sure why they're exclusive to Xbox One, but you obviously, because of that, get a little bit more out of your monthly cost if you're an Xbox One owner but overall like, like like i said it's those it's that first slate of games uh, rocket arena is ea's latest it's a 3v3 i haven't played it yet but 3, 3v3 arena shooter which looks pretty good but it's it's probably in these as i'm sure that's where and and battlefield and battlefront that that's going to be the bulk of your where the value comes from your subscription i think um unless you're really into anthem which um uh, you shouldn't be. And then if we quickly look at EA Play, which <laughs> which is the PC version, but on the site is just called EA Play, even though these are all called EA Play. So good, more good branding work from you there, EA. Um, it's pretty much going to look the same again. I don't know. But, the, but the, the, the Origin, what was used to be called Origin Access, has a lot more indie titles on PC versus the console versions. But it doesn't seem like they show you that. So Sim City, there you go. Sim City is obviously a good um, simulation game, um, and the Origin client has a, quite a few of them on the subscription. Command and Conquer. Um, you know what? It's probably better if I show you this in Origin still. If we sort by genre, we can probably see a couple of um, games that aren't included in the console version. So the Escapists, Out of the Park Baseball is like a um, like football manager for baseball. Sorry, I don't know baseball, so that was my comp. But like a, a sports management sim for baseball enthusiasts. Um, Fast FTL Faster Than Light is like a real-time strategy slash management where you have to run a spaceship. That's pretty good. Um, the SimCity Reboot, SimCity 4... Which is kind of old, and SimCity 2000, which is really old. If you want to hear from nostalgia, Mini Metro is definitely a highlight on here. That's like a very addictive puzzle game where you have to build underground metro stations across different um, underground networks uh, over the world. That's really addictive. Um, I'm obviously not going to go through all of these because we'd be here forever. They're probably the highlights that I like on here. Um, and I think indie indie is probably the other genre where you get your ex, some extra money's worth with EA Play on PC. So Next Machina is another definite highlight. That's a really fast-paced, really intense twin-stick shooter that I've had a lot of fun with. Breeze Edge is kind of similar to Journey to the Savage Planet, if you've played or, or have seen that. Um, it's kind of... I think it's still in early access, so it, it, it's very... Um, raw but it is like satirical uh, space age kind of uh, survival sim well not sim but it's good uh, detention is like a spooky Taiwanese horror uh, story which is good snake pass is a fun 3d platformer mm, dead cells is a really good metroidvania um, that a lot of people you probably heard of <laughs> frostpunk is another like survival um simulation so there's a lot of simulation games tacoma is like a walking simulator ultimate chicken horse definite highlight um multiplayer platformer where you can't kind of try and mess over your friends in fun ways damn it can be Come done on, i believe in you <laughs> so oh, yeah. tricky though <laughs> i almost don't want to add anything next turn <laughs> <laughs> So you can you can kind of tell I've only touched on a couple of the genres here, but you can kind of tell that the origin, the PC version of EA Play has a lot more to offer um, for the same price. So well, that's good if you're on PC. Obviously, a bit annoying if you're on console because I know there are definitely console versions of a lot of these games, but for whatever reason, they're only included in the PC version. Finally, if we want to take a quick look at EA Play Pro. This is the premier subscription and it's only available on PC, 
but it's instead of the £3.99 per month, it's £14.99 per month, or $15.99 a month, I think. Um, and as you can see, it's a lot of the games we've already covered. Um, Star Wars Jedi and Command and Conquer are really the only two. And the weird thing is there are more than this, uh, if we go back on Origin in a sec, but even on their website, like for an extra £10 a month, a little bit, £11 a month, you're getting two extra games um, and all the rest, obviously you will get FIFA 20, Madden, uh, FIFA 21, Madden 21 when they come out. But I mean, I really, really think you're overpaying if you're going for the premier subscription. So this gives you the best idea of what you actually get with an EA Play Pro membership. So you obviously get the latest versions of Madden, NHL and FIFA whenever they come out. Um, you get the Battle Pass for Apex Legends, which probably is a pretty decent amount of money, but seeing as it's, you know, optional, um, I'm not sure if that adds that much value. Um, Sonic Mania, Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition, which is just a load of cosmetic items, but that's actually moved to the base P um, EA Play Pro membership now, so that doesn't really count. Um, North Guard, which again, I'll, I'll admit I haven't heard of or seen anything about so it's definitely a very select few additions uh, and it's more actually upgradable uh, downloadable content or, or or game upgrades rather than standalone new titles um and it just it seems crazy to me like i'm equally shocked at how good the value is of the regular ea play um and for getting all of this for three pound 99 per month and I'm shocked at how little you get from the pro membership, um, which is £14.99 per month or £90 a year. I can't believe it's this much for, for the amount you get. It just It's just crazy. I guess they are banking on those people that do, you know, commit to buying Madden, FIFA and NHL or maybe just one of those per year. But if, if, even if you were playing Madden and FIFA 21, I don't think that's going to offset the cost of just buying those games outright i suppose if it's 80 pound a year and the cost of buying those two games would also be 80 pound a year so maybe that's their target audience but i mean i i have this membership here and i i do think that's really good value one of the benefit of ea play on pc i forgot to mention are game trials and this allows you to play select games up to 10 hours if you're on the base subscription and unlimited if you're on the pro subscription uh, up to 10 days before launch. So in Madden 21, I could play for 10 hours um, with my EA Play base membership before um, having to buy the game or upgrade to Pro. And even though Madden 21 is already out, this option came to me. I think it was maybe two or three days before the game came out, so not bad. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of uh, all the different games you can get depending on your different EA subscription, even though they're now all called EA Play. I just want to mention a couple of other games I forgot about on the EA Play Pro subscription, which is A Plague Tale Innocence um, and Darksiders 3 and the new Star Wars Rogue Squadron, whenever that comes out. So a couple more uh, standalone games, but I still think there's a massive gulf in value for money versus EA Play Pro for PC and EA Play for PC. Um, and I think I made it pretty clear which one I prefer. And I think a large part of that is because a lot of the play pro games trickle down to the regular bit the base subscription over time we've seen that with madden 20 and fifa 20 recently uh, the star wars battlefront 2 enhanced edition so i think yeah for that reason uh, the base subscription is probably the best value out of all of them the console versions more rely on you being um, taken with a certain one of those games like a ufc or a fifa or a battlefield um, I think if that is you, which there obviously are a lot of people like that, then it's worthwhile giving it a try at least. And you can try it for a couple of months and see whether it's worth it that way. Uh, and especially when you consider uh, £20 for a year or $30 for a year subscription, that's the same price as, you know, probably what FIFA 20 would cost to buy the game outright right now. Um, you can, you know, pay that same amount and have FIFA 20 and all those other games for a whole year. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, the, the games on EA Play and what they're all like, um, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're new. The series I'm doing is only just getting started, but I've already got one on the best first person shooters 
on EA Origin Access, now EA Play. Uh, and I'm one, there's one coming up next week on the best multiplayer online co-op games, which has been a lot of fun to record. We've done some FIFA 20 Pro Clubs, uh, some Ultimate Chicken Horse, and some Worms. So um, yeah, if you like any of those games, you want to see some gameplay on that, please uh, look out for that video next week and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And on that note, if there are any other genres or, or games on EA Play that you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get on that very soon. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. And I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye.